Coming up, shares of SeaWorld plummet after a less than spectacular second quarter earnings report. A resort in Claremont gets swallowed by a sinkhole. And Brett Michaels goes from Celebrity Apprentice to playing hotel lobbies. All that coming up. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 639 for the week of August 19th, 2013. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. You can receive a shipboard credit up to $600 when you book your next Disney cruise vacation with Dreams Unlimited Travel. To check out all the specials and discounts they have on Disney cruises, visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studios in Orlando, Florida. I am your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Kevin Close, Teresa Eccles, the lovely Miss Julie Martin, the tan Miss Julie Martin, yeah. very snooky. It's getting a little snooky with the tan. Excuse me? Oh I went on a girl's oh. trip to the beach. She, I'm not allowed to lay out and be tan. Oh, I like to be oh, tan. Oh, oh Lord. Oh See, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> snooky. She, she didn't um, warn us when she came in. I'm just telling her. Okay. And uh, producing this week, uh, Craig Williams, uh, along with associate producer Sean Thompson, back in the Production nook, Dustin has the day off. He has friends in from out of town. I told him uh, told him to take the day off. Oh, that's just a lie. Time. He doesn't have friends. Yes, he does. Oh, I've right. met them. I've actually met them. And oh, uh, I think I think he's on his way out to the beach. So He um, could use some sun. He could use some sun. He's a little pasty, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. A couple things in housekeeping. Just want to let everyone know, we will not be going out live next Tuesday as we are all going to be on the Oasis of the Seas, Royal Caribbean's mega ship, or most of us. I, I know you're, <laughs> you're not going to be there. Okay, that was your choice. Um, but uh, so we are pre-recording a show at the end of the week, and uh, we will have that up. We were actually, I think, we're pre-recording two shows uh, this week, and uh, those will go up the normal time, still on live stream, one p.m. next Tuesday. But those will not actually be going out live because we can't broadcast from the middle of the ocean yet. Yet, I'm working on it. Um, also want to give a plug to the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. It comes out every Thursday. Uh, this week, Nancy will continue her Southern California 101 series, uh, this time focusing on Orange County, and the team's going to talk about their favorite Disneyland music. That's uh, Tom Bell, Michael Bowling, Tony Spatel, Mary Jo Willie, and Nancy Johnson, an amazing team. So much knowledge of Disney and Disneyland. It's just an incredible show. Even if you're not planning a trip to Disneyland. Uh, they're a great, t- a great group of people to listen to, a lot of great information. So every Thursday, uh, disunplugged.com, you can find them. And uh, be sure to show them your support. Um, also want to give a plug to our YouTube channel. Please go out and subscribe. I think we just broke 11,000 mm-hmm. subscribers, which is kind of a big deal for us. And uh, really proud of that. And put out some amazing video in the last month. And if you want to get notified every time... We release a new video, including this show, as well as all the other video we produce. Uh, just go to our YouTube channel. Links to that and everything else we talk about in our show on our show notes page, disunplugged.com. I also got to be a guest on a, a Brit podcast uh, that will be coming out, I think, sometime this week. It's called Diz After Dark. Uh, DizAfterDark.com is the website. Really nice group of guys. Uh, we had a fun time, even though it was just uh, Dustin and I with one of those guys and um, we had a really nice conversation, so that should be coming out sometime this week. Disafterdark.com. Um, we also did something a little different last Friday. We went live from what we were calling the Diz Clubhouse, which is actually my family room. And uh, But it looked really good. Did you see how nice it that did. looked? I did. It I, really I did watch great. it. I actually watched it. <laughs> I was really happy. Dustin did a great job lighting that. I was really happy with that. Um, but uh, we were talking about the new Disney Infinity, and we got really great uh, responses from everybody on the format and the the content in that show, and I appreciate that. And we are going to have a full review of Disney Infinity coming up uh, uh, later on this week. But before we get to the full review, there's one thing I can already tell you about Disney Infinity. Do not buy the three the Nintendo 3DS version. It is a rip-off. It is the same price as it is for 
the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, uh, Wii and Wii U, but it is basically a version of Mario Party from the Nintendo 64. Um, it's really disappointing and is not worth, it's the same price as everything else and it's a one one hundredth of the game. Yeah, it's so different. It's kind so of disappointing. It's really uh, Sean was uh, Sean was playing because it's the only thing he owns. He Sean does is the only twenty something that does not play video games. Yeah, and, and we are we you know we've just learned this recently, so we are. Uh, of don't course, feel bad, Sean. We're I'm, mocking him. I don't play either. Well, you're a girl. You're not supposed to. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. oh. That right. was a little sexist. Yeah, that, oh, wow. <laughs> and the chatterati go crazy. It was wow. a joke. <laughs> um. So, yeah, the DS version, uh, the 3DS version of uh, uh, Disney Infinity. Avoid. Avoid at all costs. The rest of it, oh, my God, it's amazing. You know, for the Xbox 360, the PlayStation. So it'll work on my Wii? It'll work on Wii, yes. Okay. And, uh, but, like I said, full review coming up later in the week. But just a uh, heads up to everybody, 3DS version, Disney Infinity. Stay away from it. And that's what I have for housekeeping. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I wanted to mention that uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, is our final chat for Diz Cruise. So if you're going to be on the Diz Cruise, please join us for chat. Um, we've been having fun. We've been uh, getting to meet everybody. But most importantly, we've been able to give people information who've never been on a Royal Caribbean cruise before. So please come join us. Get to know your fellow cruisers and ask any questions you have. Um, it's different than going on a Disney cruise in a lot of uh, aspects. So In that it's not a Disney cruise. Exactly. <laughs> but there's some procedural stuff that's different. So we want to make sure <laughs> everybody... They, have, they do procedures they on They do them? procedures and on maneuvers. Your, procedures oh. on Ooh, your... Ooh, we maneuver. like maneuvers. I like maneuvers. <laughs> I can do the maneuver. Okay. So please make sure you join us for that chat. Also... Thursday nights, we do Adventures by Disney Chat. We get to know the folks going on our next group. We're talking to our folks going to Germany. So if you're on that trip, please join us. You're not a Grey Gardens fan, it seems. Yeah, or Craig either. Boy. <laughs> they were confused. The maneuver. That's where the maneuver comes from. Oh, that's from. where the maneuver. Yeah. Okay. And um, along the lines of Adventures by Disney, I want to mention that we have a February backstage magic trip, which is filling up fast. Yes, it is. I was very happy to see the... Uh Yep. Reservations coming in for Come that. In. So if you're interested in going with the Diz to California, Backstage Magic, February 2014 is your only chance for next year. Everything else is booked up. Because there July's, are people that were faster than you. Yep. July's so, booked now. July July's sold, out. sold out. July and December are both sold out. Yeah. Completely sold out. Well, people I and, like in uh, July? I, I imagine yeah. in the next couple of weeks, February is going to be sold out as well, the way it's cool. coming in. So. Send an email, Kevin at Dreams Unlimited Travel, if you're interested in that trip. If you are interested and even want to start the discussion, please send it before Friday morning. If you send it next week, it's just going to sit in my inbox and until I, will I let, get back. I will let everybody know that we do have enough people on that February trip that the departure will go. It's, it's not going to get canceled. So, oh, no, it would never get canceled. Um, this, yeah. is, uh, this, this is a guaranteed yeah. departure. So it's definitely going, and uh, it should be a good trip in February. So Again, we can even start the discussion. I just can't do anything about it for the next week, starting Friday. Through the Talk first. amongst yourselves so, uh, while you're gone. I don't want to make sure I mention chat. So that's it for yeah. my housekeeping. Did you mention Thursday night chat? I just yes, did. Yes, he did. I should listen to you more often. <laughs> <laughs> Not only here. Wow. Well. In real life, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else for housekeeping? That's it for me. About, uh, Aaron's Diz Meets coming up. In oh, that's right. We have to yeah. push the, Indian uh, the Indianapolis meet. Thank you for reminding us. A week from this week. Friday. Holy, really? No, it's two weeks from this Friday. Wait, yeah, no, this, wait. wait. No. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the 7th. It's the weekend yeah, of the 7th. Yeah. So, okay. stop it. Um, <laughs> it's the 7th it's is a Saturday. A week from Friday, I'm on a cruise. So, no, it's not a week from Friday. Um, but, uh, yeah, the in Indianapolis does meet uh, the weekend of the 7th, of September 7th. Uh, it's potluck. Ter I Teresa, Kathy, Dustin, Sean, Craig, myself, will be out there for it. So. Hello. Are you guys going to... I didn't know you... you <laughs> yeah. Corey didn't tell me you guys were going. Oh, he didn't? No. Yeah, I thought we said that a long time ago. Well, okay. So road trip, we're getting a big van and driving it? That's how... Yeah. That's, yeah, well, you can get... Like, you can you drive. Can yes, knock Scooby yourself out. You can get the party bus. That's right. yeah. I, I don't think want you should the do pole it. bus. I just want to... I think that's... Oh, cool. please. Everybody... Yeah, do a head count when you get back. Does to anybody think she'd be alive by the time we hit Pennsylvania? <laughs> Somehow, I don't think you'd still be on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten on the bus in the first place. Pete's following him in his car. I like RVs. And then there's the <laughs> Delaware meet, right? Delaware November. meet done in no uh, early November, November first, I believe, November first or that weekend. So, uh, some Diz meets coming up to raise money for Give Kids the World, 
our, our part of our Power of Ten mm -hmm. fundraising challenge. We're trying to raise a million dollars. So help us out, show up for the meets, and uh, it's always it's always a lot of fun. Uh, we Nova put on, Scotia was we, amazing. We put on a show out in the barn, and uh, you know, Andy it's and a lot of fun. Turn Girl. that new theater into an old barn and put on a show. That's right. <laughs> Bales of hay everywhere. It's fun. Well, that's all I had for housekeeping. All right, then we'll move on to Johnny with the news. All right, our first news story. Um, last week, we talked about... Um, no cheap product placement. What did you talk about? We talked about Disney earnings, and um, we had Jason Garcia here. From the Orlando Sentinel. And we were talking about what we thought he thought the effects of the documentary Blackfish was going to have on SeaWorld's earnings. And luckily enough, SeaWorld's earnings came out last week as well. SeaWorld Entertainment released disappointing earnings results for their second quarter of 2013, sending their shares down 12% in aftermarket trading I mean, and last that's, Tuesday. That's a plummet. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's 12% the that's 12% is like the bottom fell out of that stock. You also have to understand, too, this is a new stock just out a couple of months so that's big for them usually they're on a rise for that kind of you know when you first release a stock total uh second quarter revenue fell three percent to 411 million dollars and adjusting earnings were down 10 percent to 127 million um management attributed the drop in revenue to lower attendance in the second quarter which was down nine percent from 7.2 million people in 2012 to <laughs> I knew you were doing it, and it wasn't funny until I saw the show. <laughs> until I saw the screen. <laughs> I'm going to start from the beginning. See where all, no, I'm not do it. Man, management attributed the drop in revenue to lower attendance in the second quarter, which was down 9%. Um, three things they say caused the drop. One, unusually bad weather. The fact that Easter was in uh, the first quarter versus which the is, second quarter. Which is something that Jason had mentioned, that that was going to hurt them uh, to begin with. Right. And three, the anticipated admissions dropped due to a 9% increase in ticket prices. Hmm. Uh, people in the parks, it was noted that with fewer people in the park, guests have a, quote, better experience, and costs will also go down. Uh, SeaWorld executives... Okay, wait, hold wait. on. Mm -hmm. their, their attendance went down because of bad weather? But it didn't go down at Disney because of bad weather. I was just going to say, are the Disney fans more stalwart? No, I just think there's different weather at Disney. Apparently, you know that. Nine but no, miles no, no, no. Is... The one that the one that's getting me is that you know they're they're trying to spin less people in the park as like good for their bottom line, right. um, and it really isn't. Mm -mm. But I just think that's interesting. But it's hotter than the surface of the sun there. Oh my. It can get real. It can be quite oh, warm. We were there a couple of weeks ago with the kids, and I mean, like, we had a good time, but I sweat sheets, people. I don't perspire. Like, you can look at me, like, I'm like, there's yeah. a wall of water just washing out my running. body. <laughs> yeah. I it's can miserable. understand that less people in the park would increase the experience for other people. I would feel that in any park I went to, if I could get rid of all the people in Disney. Oh, yes, world, I would have a great I would, time. I'd have a good time. <laughs> there you have it, folks. Kevin Close wants to get you out of the Magic Kingdom. He does. I That's do, at, at least that. while I'm there. He also wants you off the highways and out of the supermarket. It's and his want, way and you're in it. Right. And I want you to have your wallet open in Publix line before you get to the cash register. And I really? want you to have 10 items or less and not write a check like the damn sign right. says, okay? Drawn on the first National Bank of Botswana, so you have to get the <laughs> stock boy to come out and verify it. I'm so glad it. that I'm not the only person who hates people who do not read signs. And you think to yourself, oh, no. do people still write checks in the grocery oh, no. store? Uh, and, I, and I say something. <laughs> I, when they, I, I, a couple weeks ago, I, had a, oh, there, I was in the, uh, the express line, and you know it says 10 items or fewer, no checks, please. This woman had like 20-some-odd items and was writing a check. I'm like... I said, I said to her, I said, I guess those rules don't apply to you. I'm pointing to the sign. And she just looks at me. And I looked at the cashier. I'm like, and why are you letting her get away with it? Send her to another line. Or they have a stack of potatoes, and she's writing a check. And I think to myself, get a bank card. Get a debit card. Go use the ATM. Oh beg my. for beg for beg for uh, for change. Apparently, I'm rubbing off on people. Oh my! So. Tell us about SeaWorld. Susie, so like, I'm done with the SeaWorld story. Scary. Apparently, it's very inflammatory. <laughs> really? Ooh, man, that was bad. God, we gotta go to Publix after this. I don't know. All right, our second news story: fatal crash on Disney property involved Magical Express. This bus. is sad. Yeah. Oh. A woman has died at the hospital after a crash on Walt Disney World property involving a car and a Disney's Magical Express bus the Florida Highway Patrol said last Friday. The crash happened around 3.30 p.m. on Epcot Center Drive. 
uh, the Epcot Center Drive was then completely blocked in the area after the crash. Florida Highway Patrol Sergeant Kim Montez said the bus carrying 36 passengers hit the woman's car. The 63-year-old victim, later identified as Solange Blaine, died at Celebration Hospital. Investigators said witnesses told them the woman's car stopped in the travel lane and the bus wasn't able to stop in time. Uh, Reedy Creek fire officials said two other people on the bus, including a child, were also transported to a non-emergency as a non-emergency precaution. Uh, Disney officials confirmed the crash, saying Magical Express is a Mears transportation owned and operated bus service that runs between Orlando International Airport and two Disney, to Walt Disney World. Both Mears and Walt Disney World uh, representative expressed their sadness and um, condolences to the family of the woman who was killed. That's so sad. I'm guessing that bus was going pretty fast. <sighs> I mean, it seems really strange. She was stopped in the travel lane. So, I mean, she was... Was she alone, did it say? It seems like she was alone in the car. Yeah. Why? Well, look, you know what? There's no point in speculating no. on it. There needs to be an investigation. A woman is dead. Our condolences go out to her family. Um, just, 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 just sad. Just sad. I hope she wasn't having like trouble in the car. You know, like maybe yeah. personal health trouble inside the car. Maybe that's why she stopped, you know? Like, I hope that wasn't the case. Poor thing. But I just wonder what the circumstances Ugh. were that the bus wasn't able to stop in time. Was it... That road, the speed limit on that road is 50, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that going been... pretty fast if somebody's at a complete stop. I, I guess I, yeah. I you mean, don't know you get Not there. to be too graphic, but the... But she's in the driver's seat. There's pictures from it. She's in the driver's seat, and um, she's killed. So, I mean, that, that's a big impact. That's a massive impact. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's very, very I feel sad. bad for her family. Me too. Yeah. All right. On to our next happy story. Disney Area Resort collapses into 100-foot-wide sinkhole. I've got a rant on this, too. A sinkhole swallowed part of a Florida resort villa near Walt Disney World last week. Nearly a third of the structure at Summer Bay Resort had collapsed. All 105 guests staying in the villa were evacuated, as were those in the neighboring build buildings. No injuries were reported. The villa, with 24 three-story units, was reported as a total loss, and inspectors remained on the scene to determine whether the other two buildings near the 100-foot sinkhole would be safe to enter. The first sign of trouble came around 10.30 p.m. local time last sa Sunday, Security guard Richard Shanley had just started his shift, and he heard what sounded like shouting from a building. A guest flagged him down to report that a window had blown out. Shanley reported to management, and another window popped. The resort staff decided to evacuate the villa. Shanley said the building seemed to sink by tw 10 to 20 inches, oh. and banisters began to fall off the building <clears throat> as he ran up and down three floors trying to wake guests. One couple with a baby on the third floor couldn't get their door open, had to break a window to get out. Um, it goes on to further describe people's first-hand encounters of the situation. Uh, the building sank into the ground over a five-hour period, and uh, there were no further signs before. There were no signs before Sunday that a sinkhole was developing, and there's no further signs that the sinkhole is getting any larger. Well, I I kind of went off on Facebook a few days ago because I uh, forgot where I was, but I was watching, uh, a CNN was on, and they were showing this, and the crawl is saying Disney Resort collapses into right. sinkhole. And it just absolutely pissed me off to no end. It's not a Disney Resort. It's in Claremont, for crying out loud. Right. It's miles away. It's not a Disney resort. But, you know, we see this during the wildfires, too. There'll be a wildfire in Cocoa Beach, and then you see a picture of the castle. Um, Disney area um, leveled by her, her tornado, and you find out it's up in North Florida. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean... Disney <coughs> sells news. And it just absolutely infuriated me to no end that, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it shouldn't surprise me. It 
but it does. It just, I don't know. I kind of want to talk to a little bit about sinkholes in general because we got a lot of yeah, people. Because this now. is another wonderful word to add to the litany of words that already <laughs> describe us here, which is uh, what is it? Uh, wildfires and tornadoes. hurricanes and tornadoes and hanging chads. And alligators. And alligators. Oh. I hadn't thought about the chads in a while. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the land where people can't count. Um, There's a lot of people who have expressed concern now. Should I cancel my vacation? Is Disney going to be swallowed by a sinkhole? So Probably. Yes. I moved to Florida. <laughs> yes, I, my, my prediction is yes. All sea World is 47, no. <laughs> All 47 square miles of the Disney World Resort will fall into a sinkhole. Well, what and it will happen sinkhole? while you're here. Florida it's, is beach sand. Right. And, under, and water is... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was saying, underneath, <laughs> the, underneath the dirt could be rivers, could be moving sand, and it shifts, and then it creates a hole on Our the Our water ground. table There's no Florida. way to know this before you buy a house or anything. Yes, there it? are geological surveys that go on before construction is done. Do you ever notice that, I don't know where you live now, but in most neighborhoods, places are built up, and they have retention holes or retention ponds. Yeah, yes. We yes. call them lakes. We call them lakes. We have a little lake right by our house. <laughs> yes, we do. So they take that dirt, and they build up the dirt, and that helps to stabilize it. And then they bring the trucks in, and they pack it down, they pack it down. Yeah. That helps to reduce sinkholes, but sinkholes are unpredictable. They are. I mean, it- Do you ever dig in your yard? And you get Only water? to bury animals. That's in. why we don't have basements in Florida. <laughs> Only to bury animals. That right. was How many of those also, also, and I just, I, I got to ask, who do I have to pay to fix this monitor over here? <laughs> what, what do we have to do? This is driving me insane. This monitor keeps blinking. Um, but that's why we have... Uh, Sean? We're blaming Sean? Okay. It's Sean's fault. Yeah, I'll take the blame. That's why we don't have basements in Florida. The water table is so high that right. you would, they would always be wet. So basically, you're built on wet beach sand, and it shifts. And that's what causes a sinkhole. They're really kind of common here in Florida. They had one in Sanford not too long ago that swallowed a house. Oh, yeah. yeah but any t- oh, that guy was sleeping. I remember mm-hmm. that. However, so I think... Yeah, and died. I mean, yeah. like, just like never found... Because you can't go they, into they a sinkhole to find, find people, They didn't right? find him. They didn't find the man's body. It's like to the sinkhole to the center of the earth or what? Yes, I mean, really yes. To hell. He went all the way to China. <laughs> he's, tell, in, he's in China. Tell the story that Mark <laughs> Clark tells about... <laughs> Building the monorail through Epcot. Right. If you listen to Marty Sklar, they were going to build uh, the monorail going to Epcot. They started, they decided to put the monorail in and they started sinking posts into, it's not the Seven Seas Lagoon. Oh, I think I've heard this. The yeah. lagoon. It's the what's actually between Future World and World Showcase, that body of those two little bodies of yeah, water. Yeah. They started sinking um, pylons to put the monorail up. And they put one in, and it disappeared. <laughs> and they put another one in, and it disappeared. I forget how many he said. How I said many it was a lot. It was like they, 10 or 12. They wait, finally so it's up. still on this location? No, what they did was they built a platform to span it, and they put concrete and rebar and oh, okay. supported it. So the monorail is actually sitting on a, a man-made foundation. Because every time they tried to put one in, it just disappeared. So they don't actually know oh, how Lord. deep that water is. I think it's safe to say, though, there's not been a sinkhole at Disney yet after all these like, years. Then they're over, too. Tar pits. They are over. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. It's See, that's, time. That's how I think. Oh, okay? God. That's that, that's that can-do attitude I have. <laughs> then they're over, too. It's going to happen. It'll happen when I'm there. I'll die. And uh, oh, that'll be how Lord. that goes. Stop saying that. Ooh. Wouldn't that be mm, something? It would be like a little Grand Canyon right there in the middle of it. So. <laughs> but the, picture, the pictures of the... Y'all got, I love that. I got your little... Off into space on camera. <laughs> I love the picture though. The picture of it sinking in. That's, That's scary though. Scary, I mean, it's. That? I mean, it could happen at your house, John. Luckily, it wasn't a very popular resort. <laughs> like nobody in it. So no one was hurt. I wasn't in no, no one was hurt. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, good, good. I just Who was their travel agent. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, really. All right, no. and our final news story. Gosh, is another. Don't jinx us. <laughs> Don't really, jinx us. Don't say that. Oh, I, oh, saw, I saw this. this. All right. Dick Van Dyke saved from burning car on Los Angeles freeway. Uh, <laughs> beloved TV icon, movie star, singer, and dancer Dick Van Dyke narrowly escaped injury Monday yeah, when his white four-door Jaguar had engine trouble and became engulfed in flames on a Los Angeles highway. He's fine, thank God. Didn't someone pull him out? He yes. couldn't get out by himself. He's fine, thank God. His wife, Arlene Van Dyke, 41, said on Twitter as she linked to a 41. <laughs> She is 41. I believe you. 
I'd marry Dick Van Dyke. In the video posted on Vine, the 87-year-old actor is seen standing, talking, and wearing Mm -mm. an immaculate white polo shirt. He looks perfect. Besides his his thoroughly charred car shortly after the fire was extinguished. And did you hear what he said? Anybody want to buy a used Jag? (laughs) He drives a Jag. That's so awesome. Uh, The 60s uh, star... Quote, said, quote, it just started making a noise. I thought I had a flat tire. Then it started smoking. Then it burned to a crisp. It was scary. He said he was lucky that a fireman, a nurse, and a cop happened to be passing by a stop okay, to help. It's like a, a game. Joke. It yeah. is like a game. <laughs> right, exactly. It they, sounds like the start of a joke. They went into a bar. The first good Samaritan <laughs> on the scene thought the actor was hunched over the wheel and disoriented when he opened the door and helped him to safely. Safety. It was just... He thought I had fainted. He thought I was passed out, so he yanked me out. Very excited, Dick Van Dyke said with a laugh in a video interview. Uh, what was he, he waiting for? He was also Dick Van Dyke was also quoted as saying, "Someone's looking after me." Wouldn't you be excited to find Dick Van Dyke in a car? Yeah, but he said he thought I was. <laughs> I, would, I would put that on my resume. Wait, wait, I saved said, Dick Van Dyke from fire. I, I thought I, he thought I was. I was passed out. Well, why was he slumped over the wheel? Why wouldn't he just getting out? Was he just? I, for some, I don't know why, but he could not get out. That's what what I read. Someone I, pulled him to say shirt dirty. But I wonder if, like, because it happened so quickly, if he started to get the little smoke inhalation, could be because that could, could disorient. Be. You think but he'd be so used sane. to that from Mary Poppins? Wasn't he a chimney sweep? Isn't he used to smoke? Yes. No. Oh, he's 87 uh, and he's still driving. That's is that not appropriate? Gets me too. Hey. When I met Dick Van Dyke, he was lovely. <laughs> oh. Step one: oh, identify can I the throw victim. With you. <laughs> when, I met Dick. when I had lunch with him, we did. We had lunch with him. We did. We kind of had, yeah. We were in the same restaurant at the same time having lunch. So, so technically, I had lunch with Dick Van Dyke. I actually got to shake his hand. Didn't somebody say his wife refers to him as Van Dyke? All right. She tweeted and she, she said, actually refers to him as Mr. Vandy. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, That's not disturbing. creepy. In <laughs> private, too? Like. Well, no, 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 no. I All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you that one. Sorry. Oh, this is one it. of the moments I really hate that we're live. Because um, I got a great joke, but I can't Mr. tell Vandy. it. Mr. Vandy. We're all very happy that Mr. Vandy's yes. okay. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I can follow Mr. Vandy on Twitter. I'm very excited that he's okay. I am. This was. This could have been horrible. This could have gone the other way. I have John. something. I think we've, we're all missing the point, though. Why is this 87 year old man driving a <laughs> that, Jaguar? I, did I not just say that? Why is he driving? Okay. <laughs> My great grandfather drove until he was well into his 90s. Now, granted, he may not. Yeah, yeah but he probably shouldn't the, have there been There were no driving. other cars on There's the road. There was less things to hit. <laughs> <laughs> He's on an LA freeway. I wonder if it was an old car, if it was new. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. No, happen. it looks. You think this is an insurance claim waiting to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and how did he get nothing on his polo? I know. I want to see his. Yeah, I want to see a photo of him after the. It's in the vine, actually. His wife vined it while okay. it was happening. I'll have to look. Did she go to the side, or did she maybe, or to the crash? The I think she tampered with the brakes or something. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh. 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 Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> You're 87 years old. <laughs> I've waited long enough. Really? Twice his age. Oh, my God. They haven't been married that long, have they? Actually, I think they have. Like 40 years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like five or six years or something. She was betrothed as a child. That was really yes. good. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for the Now that we've bes- besmirched Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I have not. I love Dick Van Dyke. We do, too. Me, too. When I met him, he was lovely. Will you stop? <laughs> I He's wearing show cream every night. flannel pants and a beautiful cream-colored sweater. I'm sure he can appreciate good humor. Okay. Well, <laughs> I agree. That one that can that can end it for the news, I guess. That's it. We will move on from Mr. Vandy <laughs> to I love that. Um, to rapid fire, and uh, let's start with uh, who do we have up first, guys? Who, who do I tell you first, Teresa? Actually, we have John. John. All right, oh, John. Awesome. All right, Kevin and I had a chance to tour the models for the villas at the Grand Floridian Resort. Uh, it was over at Saratoga Springs, and we had a chance to walk through and see them. Very, very pretty. Uh, possibly, in my opinion, the most beautifully decorated Disney Vacation Club resort out there. Really? Extremely luxurious. Yeah, I mean, and I think from a styling aspect, a styling standpoint, um, again, might be my my favorite at this point. Might be the most beautiful bathroom I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, really? I took pictures of it to take home. I want to do my bathroom this way. These way. guys have some photos that we took. I'm hoping we could flip through mm-hmm. them really quick. Um, this is the, the studio bed. one bedroom. The studios will actually sleep five people. There's a pull-out sofa in the entertainment system. 
You can see it there underneath the TV. Oh, fun. So, Close death by TV. Really? Dang. So, I mean, you know, well, five small pretty. people. but four Also people. something in the studio which is completely unheard of, there are two showers. Yep. The, two the, showers the, in a studio? Right. Mm-hmm. It's a picture Same of Like the, two shower heads or two separate no, showers? Two, two separate showers. showers. Same bathroom? For five people. No, nope, there's a division. Get to the bathroom. See, go back one more, guys. Like this things. is... The bed, the bathroom is actually has two pocket doors entering it, and a pocket door between it. The toilet, a tub, and a shower is in one side. Uh, the vanity and a walk-in shower is on the other oh. side. Oh, it's so Brady Bunch. Wow. I think it's incredible design. I could use that in my house. So oh that's my the one gosh. side with the tub and the shower, and I think the next one is the actual walk-in shower. Wow. Uh, okay. I think this is brilliant. Yeah, I like this that is, too. Deserve. These photos don't do it. Justice. The color doesn't show up. It's sort of a bluish gray with a little green. It's a very muted color, and the tie, the floors in the bathroom, are white marble with little black insets. Oh, yeah. Absolutely stunning bathroom. That's pretty. So again, a studio sleeps five people. That's big for families now. So if you want to, you know, you have a larger family. Well, that addresses place. one of the big issues people have had on, uh, you know, on Disney property. There are a lot of families that have five people yep. and. A lot of times that requires getting two rooms or uh, or a suite or for the DVC, a, a one bedroom. Now, um, now you can do it in a studio. I would say two adults and three kids. I would not say five adults right, would be no, comfortable right, in this room. Right, of course. Pull out so for small. This is a picture of the bedroom in the one bed. This is the master bedroom in the one bedroom. Big bed, spacious, lot Love of room. Love the headboard. <clears throat> I do too. Uh, this is the sitting area. The Ooh. Little, um, very check comfortable, it. very inviting. Sounds like a see, grandma's house. Can you see like, the you know, pictures yeah, on yeah. the wall, the black and white Tasteful pictures? Grandma. Yes. Go back on, guys. <laughs> the black and white pictures are Mickey and Minnie sort of silhouettes. Oh, the silhouettes. Yeah. Very cute. I'm sorry, go ahead. Next one. The kitchen, beautiful. I wow. like those Point cabinets. Oh, look at the sink. And the, a farmhouse sink. Yeah. Really, uh, very nice. Yeah. The refrigerator is hidden in the cabinetry. That's the seating for the, the dining room. Beautiful. With a uh, cutout oh to gosh. the living room. The other part? That is the refrigerator. On the left-hand side of wow. the stove. Oh, so I wow. love those. The built-in the the fridges. Underneath. Those are so yeah, cool. They look very nice. Very excited about these. Oh, oh, a, oh yeah. I want to bathe in there. How much is rent per month? <laughs> How much is rent per month? <laughs> <laughs> you, really? You guys want to move in? Yeah. Uh, so ready. Well, we do know top. that it's going to be about $150 per point. Yeah, it's going to be a much more expensive. So this is pretty expensive. Um, now, they did tell us they're saying the minimum is 25 points. So you can lock in if you wanted to add twenty five points to stay at the Grand Floridian. That now you're an owner, so you can book at eleven months. Oh. People are buying a very small package. This gentleman was telling us the twenty five points to add to their other points, so that they will be able to book the eleven the months word? out. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> isolate it. He kept saying, you could isolate your reservation. I kept saying to John, I need to do that. I don't even know what it means. Well, I, have to but I, I want to isolate. Let's go ahead. Beautiful. One more slide, guys. This is the last one. This is the washer and dryer in the one bedroom. It's hard to tell from this picture, but it's a, a closet washer and dryer, but it's actually full size. So that's different now for um, yeah. the units going forward. So very excited about this property. So big changes to uh, DVC at Grand Floridian. Yep. And we met a listener. Oh, wow. Cool. I wanna, uh, Walking through the tour, so it was great. Well, I think that's uh, I think it's exciting that they've upped the product like that. I'm interested to see if any of this any, any of these design changes work their way into future DVC units. I have a feeling they will because you see, as they do more and more properties, they take what works. The trundle bed, whatever that's called, underneath the TV, that's also available in Alani. So they've taken that and they've moved it forward to something, to new properties. I think we're going to see this. They felt, the studio felt bigger. I said to the tour guide, I said, is this a bigger square footage? He said, no, there's the same size. It's just better design. Um, It has a better design. I've gone to all the previews and either seen the DVC properties, and they're all lovely. This is the first one that made me want to leave my house in 17 miles away and go stay on Disney property. Hmm. This was it, it was it just was very warm and very inviting and very comfortable looking. Awesome. All right, thank you very much for that, John. Appreciate that. Uh-huh. I'm sure our DVC uh, viewers and listeners will appreciate that. Um, for those listening and not watching, I encourage you to please uh, head out to uh, either disunplug.com or YouTube dot, uh, or youtube.com or to our YouTube channel to check out the pictures that John just uh, threw across. We'll also make sure those go up 
on the site as well. Find links to that in the show notes page. I just, just want to tell you a com. comment. I apologize. I didn't mean to talk over you. I just wanted to give you a comment. We toured with strangers. This wasn't our group. that We were just in with a group of strangers. And the gentleman ahead of me as part of our tour group said, this would be the kind of place that I would be willing to leave the parks to come back to. He said, I could usually sleep in a, I could usually sleep in a box with a bed because all I do is sleep there. He said, this would get me out of the parks to come back to my resort. All right. Kevin. I have an announcement to make, a big announcement. John and I have... Do we have fanfare? Da, 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 da. Do the hands. Jazz hands? Um, Ooh, John and I have been Ooh, on the Viva Ooh, Italia trip through Adventures by Disney a couple of times. And after our last adventure, we have found some things that we think work really well and some things that we think for the folks that travel with us don't work as well. So John and I have approached Adventures by Disney and we've created our very own uh, adventure in Italy. We've taken the best parts we think, it's all based on our opinion, and we've revamped some of the parts that we think don't work as well. Uh, We will be staying, uh, it will start September 16th through, what's the cutoff date? It's eight nights starting September 16th, eight nights, nine days, and we'll be staying at the Hotel Bernini Bristol in Rome. We will be staying at the Westin Excelsior in Florence. This is the big change. We won't be going to the um, Tuscan countryside. You all heard us talk about that treacherous trip up the hill. Well, Adventures by Disney has changed that resort. They're no longer staying there in the next year. And then we'll be staying at the same hotel in Venice, the Luna Baglioni. We have added things like a tour of the Doge's Palace in Venice, a tour of the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. And if you've read Dan Brown's new book, Inferno, I can't believe anybody that would read Inferno wouldn't want to go on this trip. Most of it, the action takes place in Florence and Venice, and it's almost like a a travel guide. So I think you should go out and read it. But uh, we've added some new things. uh, A travel guide with Catholics? Actually, it's not. It's more of a spy novel this time as opposed to a religious story. But a lot of it takes place in and around the Palazzo Vecchio and the Doge's Palace in Venice. So it really ties in well with this story. I mean, it's a work of fiction, but the descriptions of the places that he goes are very real. Okay. Uh, John has agreed that he will take everybody on the trip to our favorite restaurant in Florence. We took a bunch of people there the last time. It's called uh, Trattoria San Lorenzo. And several people have told me, actually one lady has told me, it's the best meal she's ever eaten in her life. So we think this is going to be a really exciting trip. Um, so the big thing is, I'm not even sure it came across in your description. The big thing is we're staying in Florence. We have a hotel right in Florence on the river. On the River Arno. Uh, very exciting. So that's a big, big change and a big difference for our group because it's much more time in Florence, which we absolutely love. Yes. And then it's all the other parts of the trip that we One love of the as complaints well. from our last trip was that... By taking a, out, by going out into the Tuscan sun, excuse me, by going out into the Tuscan countryside while it's beautiful, you spend a great deal of your free time on a bus going back and forth into the city of Florence. It took several hours, and the bus can't park in the historic center of Florence, so it's a half hour walk into the center and a half hour walk back. That's a large part of your time. We feel that staying in in Florence offers you more time. And Florence is such an amazing city. I mean, it really is phenomenal. (laughs) The other thing that's very nice is a lot of people want to visit the Uffizi Gallery. And the Uffizi Gallery is in Florence, and it's one of those museums that you have to purchase tickets in advance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people either don't know that or they don't plan ahead. What goes on there? It's an art museum. Botticelli's well, Venus. As is I say, oh, the okay. big thing is Botticelli's Venus is in there, but it also houses some of the great Renaissance artwork. Of and the lines time. around the Uffizi are always blocks and blocks long. We're going to be offering people tickets to see the Uffizi. We've we've put together a package where the tickets to the uh, the museum are included. The same is true in Venice. There's a wonderful modern art museum in Venice called the Peggy Guggenheim Gallery, and we'll have tickets for those folks that want to see that as well. Pricing? Pricing is five uh, $5,999 per person. I apologize. I did not bring the single price with me. 
based on double occupancy. Based on double occupancy, right? Right. So. And there are children's prices. We didn't think we would get many children because it starts September 16th. So this is only a little bit more than the regular trip. It actually, I just did this for a gentleman who was asking. It fits right in the price range of the trips that Adventures by Disney is selling on their website. Oh, the signature trips. Right. Yeah. Well, they've done away with that. They have sort of smashed the signature trip and the regular trip into one, and now it's only one trip. There's no more signature oh, really? trip okay. for Viva Italia. So, and they range from $5,300 to $6,300. So our trip fits right in the middle. Plus, you get the bonus stuff that we right. stuff always plus do. it with. So, um, we just want to let everybody know that we will have this up on our site and ready for sale when we come back from our cruise, from our Diz Cruise next week. If you're interested in getting in beforehand, send Kevin an email. I won't be able to book it, but I already, um, I've already tested this with our regular ABD travelers, and I've gotten a great response. So, and they've already. Uh, uh, gotten their place in line so if you're interested in joining on this trip again i won't be able to book it yet but if you send me an email at kevin at dreams unlimited travel i can sort of put you in a place in line this is next year it's september of well based on you know based on the interest just want to make it clear for everybody that based on the interest that we've we've gotten um i'm estimating even when we open this up for general sale, we're only going to have 10 or 12 spots available yeah we've got about two-thirds um, full already and, and so, these are people who have done the trip before yeah so, and I can't wait to go because I'm not missing this one. This is, I got to tell you, I'm so excited about this trip because this is really the trip we wanted to put together the last time and they, we couldn't do it. So I'm really excited about this trip. There's something nice about getting up in the morning and being able to, out, to, to walk out the front door of your hotel and actually be in Florence. I could be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see the hotel, go to the Weston Excelsior in Florence. It's a beautiful hotel. I've not stayed there. But everything I read about it, it gets very high ratings. We've stayed in the other two and love them. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kevin. Teresa. Oh, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, they've added some new things I want to talk about and some other stuff that's already been <clears throat> announced. Um, the houses this year are an American Werewolf in London, The Walking Dead, of course. John, we're doing this, right? No. Come on. Yeah, I'm not going either. No? Sorry. Having two derailed afterlife, death's vengeance, urban legends, evil dead. And I think my favorite, even though The Walking Dead is going to be there, is The Cabin in the Woods. Oh. It's a popular horror film that tells the story of five college students' trip to the country and their scary adventures with a zombie family. It, <laughs> it includes such horrors as giant snakes, killer birds, a rampaging unicorn, an evil clown, of course, and a merman. Awesome, what? huh? It starts September 20th, runs through November 2nd, weekends. Um, a single night admission this year, ninety one ninety nine. Hmm. That's not discounted. There are wow. Florida resident discounts. Yeah, That's, but nobody's going to pay that. Nobody's no. going to oh, no. pay that. Everything we're there's Florida yeah. residents. First of all, first of all go orders. into, I'm sorry, go into any 7-Eleven and buy a bottle of Coke. Mm -hmm. And it's going to give you $15 off at least. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights. 91, not yet. Not, I wouldn't pay. Then so, they have Frequent Fear, which is um, any 15 nights of your choice for seventy ninety nine. They have Frequent Fear Plus. This is what I'm talking about. And there you've, you've got you know 15 nights that you can go for 70 bucks. And then already. there's Rush of Fear. And I had to figure out what the difference between Rush and Frequent is. Rush of Fear, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Yep. Craig, if you know. Isn't it every night the first three weeks? Yeah. For fifty nine ninety nine. So even if you just go one or two nights in the first three weeks, yeah, no, it's you're done. Nobody yeah. pays if you actually paid a hundred dollars to get in the Halloween Horror Night. You did something wrong. Wait, so. you can buy three weeks for fifty nine ninety nine, and one night is uh, is ninety one. Ninety two dollars. Yeah. That's why I said that's, that's a, a special. Doesn't make any sense. Isn't that special? And they Nobody have um, special rates for groups of twenty or more. So you know, if you get and they also people. have uh, VIP uh, uh, like VIP passes where you can just go right to the front of the line at the haunted houses. I really recommend that if you're going on a busy night, if you're going, I would say, after the second week in October, um, for the rest of the month, uh, especially on a weekend, you're going to want that, that express pass because the lines for those haunted houses can be up to two hours long. It's not unusual. Uh, they're worth it. They're worth going through. But if you're if you're just waiting on lines, you're, you're not going to see everything. The only... Um 
thing I would add to that, Pete, would be um, if you do get something like the frequent fear, the rush of fear, you might not need that. If you're going back 15 times, you could just concentrate on a few like houses call, yeah, every miles night, at a time. you know, instead of doing all in one night. But yeah. I'm, what are the dates for this this year? Starts September 20th, 2021st, September 26th, 29th, every weekend in October, um, and then Halloween, and then November 1st and 2nd. So it's good two solid months almost. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And and they should. It's a it's an amazing party. It is not for children. Okay? No, don't take your child. Do not Lord. take your children. This is not for kids. This is for adults. So please don't be one of those morons in the park going through a haunted house with a five year old wrapped around your neck screaming for their life. I swear to God, I see it every year. It's child abuse in or my children opinion. with strollers. I mean oh, they, no. they see this stuff. You know, it's it's. I mean, it gives me nightmares, but I love it. So, John, come on. I, you know, believe it or not, that's not my thing. I really? don't find that as being fun walking through those. Get off houses. my lawn! Yeah. <laughs> really, Mister Nevercracker, what's that about? Mister what? what? Nevercracker, you know the the. Get uh, off my lawn! From Get the off monster my lawn. monster house, he was the guy that didn't want any kids on his lawn. I think that's racist. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, thank you, Teresa. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> <laughs> before right. that before that train wreck gets any, any worse. Okay, well, I have two. Um, first, I'm going to talk about Velvet Sessions coming up at the Hard Rock Hotel. Uh, Modern English is actually going to be featured this month on the 29th I at 6.30. I love that. You what? I Once they think I mailed for you, what are they going to do? I know. <laughs> Everybody can, go, can leave after that. I was going to just go to hear that and leave. Just sing... Just sing one song. Um, Nobody's going to know the rest of them. Brett Michaels is coming back, everybody, September 26th. Uh, <laughs> and then um, the Jim Blossoms, October 31st. Yeah, two years ago, he won the Celebrity Apprentice. And now, and he's, now really- he's playing the lobby no, of the no, hard rock. He plays every year. They have him almost every year, which is so funny to me. He must be extremely popular. But it's $29 online, $35 at the door, or you can do VIP for 50 which is only available online. Um you receive early entry if you buy your tickets online. You can get in at 6, and there will be free specialty drinks. Usually they feature some sort of gross alcohol. Um, and then VIP tickets so include fun. the benefits of a standard ticket plus a special viewing area with a private bar serving specialty drinks. This is a teeny tiny VIP area with a teeny tiny bar and a line just as long, in my opinion, yeah, yeah. as the other bars in the area. So if you want to pay the 50 bucks just to sit down, go ahead. Sean, but I don't think so it's funny. really worth the money. I saw you giggling back there. <laughs> in chat, they were talking about how they're just going to play that one song for 90 minutes. Oh, I, I, could, <laughs> I would like that, though. And then I started to think they're going to do different remixes of it, like the smooth jazz version. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Isn't okay. Brett Michael got a show now where he's rehabbing old buses? No, that's like his... Wasn't it like Tour Bus of Love or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't who is know. Brett Michael? I don't even know who he is. Lead uh, singer of Poison. Poison. Every rose Pour has some a point. sugar on me. Oh, the bandana and the plastic that did that hair. Move. Okay. Surgically no, that's Axl Rose. Uns- <laughs> unskinny, unskinny oh, that's Axl Rose. Axl Rose is the one who did, did this. He's got the vinyl fall. <laughs> it's not the same person? No. I don't know. Does Brett Michael have a headband on? He's kind of bug-eyed. He wears the headband headband plus the cowboy hat. Usually Axl just wears the headband. Hot flashes and questions. I should not know this much about 80s rock stars. It's hot in here. We should. Do, this is like a commercial for menopause. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> she Alex, can't know who anybody is. Rock my <laughs> RV. That's what it's called. You she looked at that. Flashes and right. memory loss. Ooh, this okay, is well, a memory loss. This is a man who used to it's play not, arenas. Now he's playing a hotel lobby. It was not my type of music. I was this the '80s, right? That was a different world. Here's your oh, okay. Boniva. <laughs> okay, so my second my second part of the rapid fire, um, we stayed at the Yacht and Beach Club over the weekend for a little staycation before Ferris went back to school Monday, and we got to test magic bands. Yay! Okay, so you guys yes, know they have imaginative children. You guys know I don't really I I really hate these. I think they're ugly. I don't like wearing it because it's so unattractive. But I do like the fact that I could open my hotel room door without getting my key out. Um, charge things, that's fine. Well, Remember we were talking about first world problems? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they're all the same color because, you know, they surprised when we got there. They're like, oh, guess what? You get right. to do this. So we didn't get to choose a color. So they're all gray. They labeled them with our initials underneath. Well, Corey got tired of that. So since he forgot his hair paste, he had to go find something in the gift shop to use. And he came back what with What is that, these. for his wig? <laughs> Blew his wig down with it? He, he just got his paste. Does he wear a lace front? <laughs> oh, good Lord. 
I did that just for Sean, by the way. <laughs> well, anyway, so he went to purchase that and he came back with like decorations. So you can see I have like a little Mickey jewel. He got these for Finley, but her wrist is so tiny. She can only fit one decorative item. So he Mine bought too. us the packet of Incredibles because it's the Incredible family. I love Violet. You know, I'm Mrs. Incredible. She's Violet. Yeah. Ferris is Dash. Corey yeah. is Mr. Incredible. Well, she was just so Thanks. thrilled You're by this. You're Elastigirl. Yes, Mrs. right. Incredible. So, so she was so thrilled about this, and she wore this the entire time. She has even worn it at home and when we've left the house. She calls it her superhero power band. Oh, Should have locked the door at the house with it? No. So, These are cute. <laughs> she's been calling me Elastigirl ever since. She calls Corey Bob. Ferris is Dash, and she insists that I call her Violet. When I call her Finley, she's like, no, Elastigirl, Violet. (laughs) So we are now a superhero family. But I have a little complaint about these. Um, The Incredibles, they're a five-member family. There is no Jack Jack included in this little um, (gasps) package. They didn't have a Jack Jack in a uh, studio. No, we do not have a Jack Jack. But as a mother who would like to have a Jack Jack one day, you know, he's going he yeah, to be left out. Yeah, I believe Dustin posted something on the uh, uh, on Facebook really about funny. that, which I think Corey wants him dead for. So, <laughs> um, well, so then Nikki insisted that it was going to be a girl, and he was like, "Well, Jackie, Jackie," and I'm like, "You guys, it has to be an F name." Hello, Jack A. <laughs> Jack A. <laughs> The so chatter out is had, fascinated by hair paste, by the way. You just have to revisit that. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't like gel, people. It's some sort of weird... It's made by bedhead. It is not gel. It is paste. It looks like glue in his hand. Yeah. Okay. Well, to me. Maybe not as sticky. I don't know. You get a picture of Teresa. No, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Schwitzing. <laughs> getting moist over here. Um, Ferris oh, God. A fan on. There's Ferris a fine line not. between Yiddish and cursing, by the way. Right. It's she made us. She made us all wear these say? at all times. The other thing. I what what if Corey thing. just texts me? Oh, no. Stop talking about hair paste. Stop talking about my hair products. <laughs> no, he didn't. But So she made us wear these at all times. I was required to have this on. And she and I warm the most because, you know, I was making sure of being a superhero with her. And so then we would have to match them. Like, I would have mine on and she'd have hers on and we would hit them together and we would say, superhero power. And then we would go, boom. So that's been my life Aww. since Saturday or since Friday when we checked in. I remember being a young, I remember being a young mother and doing stuff like that. Back in the 1800s. <laughs> that bitch was raising them on the prairie. So now I told Corey, I'm like, maybe we should be the Incredibles for Halloween since she's so into it, you know? It's very but cute. We had fun and, um, you know, we did have some glitches where Corey's got corrupted or whatever. But Yeah, he was, t- he was telling me that. Um, they worked pretty well overall. All right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Martin. Mr. Williams. Uh, yeah, so mine is about the Simpson Springfield area at Universal. It is now finished. It was finished up last week whenever you guys were in Nova Scotia, and I was in California for D23, but it's now fully open with the Kong and Kodos uh, ride that's there that's kind of like a Dumbo-type ride. And um, I know Corey and I will be there on Thursday to uh, – cover everything uh we have a video coming out shortly should have already been out but my hard drive got corrupted oh really i had no uh, idea you guys were going to have excuses. a dentist appointment <laughs> oh well <laughs> guess i'll cancel that <laughs> well i'll be there um and craig could not be more excited about it i no, i'm very excited yeah. about it so i actually <laughs> really? will have a video up for it um probably tonight or tomorrow night so it's a little early but i've been lucky enough to already go there and see it multiple times um but yeah it's really awesome and uh just be on the watch for more photos and videos from it. That's his excited yeah. face. <laughs> oh, listen yeah. to his yeah. voice. He has one look. And that's also his excited voice. Yeah. I thought it sounded a little more high pitched. It's, it's really stressful to try to run the switcher and concentrate yeah. on oh what my I'm God. doing. Well, apparently, apparently, that, apparently that position in the studio uh, causes people to whine. Because you got the 27-year-old, 90-year-old that's normally sitting there, always complaining. Oh, this is hurting my back. Now this one, that's very hard to do this. We should call her William. I don't know. Should we? (laughs) Never mind. All right. Thank you, Craig. Jonathan. All right. So uh, the new Rapid Fill mugs are slowly rolling out at Disney Resorts. So I got something to say about them. Yeah, basically, these are the plastic mugs that you buy for your stay. um, Or they come with your dining plan, and they have an RFID chip in them. And so it calculates how many refills you have and how long you can use it. Um, so basically the pricing is if you want to get it for just one day, it's eight ninety nine. 
eleven ninety nine for two days, fourteen ninety nine for three, and then seventeen ninety nine for the entire length of your stay. So I think now they're at the value resorts like All Star, um, Pop Century, um, and there's a lot of things that I don't really know about yet. So like how it works with like a paper cup if you just buy a fountain beverage how does the machine still work or how does it work with coffee or so we're going to go actually research it this week and go test it out and see see how it works before you go on your rant what is the rapid part of it why is it well, no r- no rant oh why for your comments what is the rapid part of it is that is the fast? name of it no i don't think it's faster i think that's just, just what they're calling out it really fast as as you. You. <laughs> <laughs> Not the pressure right out of you know, your hand. W- w- that for a long time, for a long time, one of the third rail issues, as I refer to them on the boards, was the refillable mugs and people using them over multiple stays. And you know, people would get on us because we allowed you know people to say that they they just keep reusing their their mugs. And I said many years ago, I've said it since. Um, it's Disney's problem to police, not mine. I'm not going to tell people they can't do that. If Disney isn't putting something in place to prevent it, they have to. They have to be okay with it. Then, now they've addressed it. Now they've addressed it. Problem solved. Problem solved. Now you can't bring your mug back all you want. It's not going to work. You've got to buy a new one every time you go. For the record, I buy one every time I stay at a resort. I know those mugs are. They say the mugs are for that length of stay. So I can't tell you how many of my threw out because, you know, we do a seven and seven and I'm literally buying a mug every place I go um, because I'm really like ridiculous about that stuff. But I respect I I don't judge people who didn't do that. All All I ever said about it was if Disney wants that practice to stop, it's up to Disney to police it. It's up to Disney to stop it. And they did. They've addressed it here. So, and I think I think it's great that they've got the one day, two day, three day options, so that you don't, mm-hmm. you know, you have different price points, and uh, you know, problem solved. Now, if they can just, you know, come out with some cool mugs that you want to collect. So, if you're getting multiple mugs, you know, if you if you're one of those people who travels two or three times a year or comes every year, maybe you want a different mug every year. Maybe you know. Or at least, excuse me, at least resort specific. That would be great. Resort specific would be went, amazing. If they went back but to those. We, Dare, we dare not even yeah. dream that they would do that. You but. know, Disney is doing what Disney has to do as a business. They are now getting rid of this option for people to get free refills. They're getting rid of the idea of people using someone else's ticket. You know, so as a, this is what a company does. Right. And you know what? If they're going to keep doing it. I have it. no issue with it at all. And like I said, you know, it's just it was one of those third rail issues on the boards for so long. So. However, Disney did sell mugs. It was years ago that were good for the for life. Yep. Once you bought a refillable mug, you could use it forever. Well, I want you know I'm interested a if anybody still has those and if they do, like what Disney will do in order to you know honor that. The folks on the chat boards do. Well, this I, one, I, this I, group does. Well, I like I said, I'd be very interested to hear how Disney handles that because well, no, if they sold it for life, they've got to honor that. So well, if you just want water. I mean, they're going to count that against you. No, they usually have uh, separate cups that look different. Like they have little plastic yeah, see-through. Yeah. If oh, you okay. just want water, and they're tiny. Yeah, right. they're like two tablespoons. Cup. Are they limiting how many refills you can get a day? No, I don't believe so. But I think just like Royal Caribbean, there might be like a time limit. Thing. Right, it's probably a time yeah. limit. That so. type of thing. I have to go back. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of our show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next time with another edition of the Des Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, stay out of the damn lakes.